Okay, so welcome to video one. Um, this is unit one, AP Psychology at East Leiden High School. Um, you can use these video notes if you have Gavin or Debkowski. Um, like I said, this is video one, history and famous psychologist. You are going to be filling out pages five, six, seven, and the top of page eight for this video. Or if you don't want to use the video, you can use the textbooks reading pages one through seven. So let's talk about the big ideas that are going to be covered in this unit. First thing you'll probably see is the definition of what psychology is, the overview. Um, we'll talk about whether or not psychology is a science. And then the last part I'm going to talk about is kind of like the history or the development of psychology and how it is the field it is today. So let's first start with what is psychology. Psychology is defined as the scientific study of behavior and mental process. So what is behavior? Behavior are, is observable acts. So behavior can be anything like you kicked your brother. Behavior could be um, whether you raised your hand in class. These are things that you notice and you can observe. It also covers the concept of mental processes, which they're going to study things like your memory. It's going to look at your thought process. How long does it take you to respond to certain questions? How well can you problem solve? This is the part of psychology that's a little bit trickier. It's easy to see someone's behaviors. It's harder to really understand their mental process. So the question I'm going to be asking you in class is, is psychology a science? Early opinions, many people believed it did not have enough scientific backing. So in order to be a science, you need to state a hypothesis, you need to test it, you need to gather data. And in the beginning of psychology, they didn't use many scientific um, steps to prove something. Over the past 100 years, however, psychology has become more research-based. So many researchers have provided theories to explain human behavior. Titchener, Pavlov, Rogers, Darwin, Freud, etc. So in class, I had you take a pretest. I'm trying to gather some data to see where you're falling in terms of, let's say, um, September. And then in May, I'll give you a very similar test and you can see how much you've grown. See whether I'm a good teacher, see whether or not the book works, see whether or not the videos work. And that's how you gather data. So the question is, is psychology a science? Well, psychology is a branch of knowledge or study dealing with a body of facts that are supported by data. You need an experiment to gather the data. However, it's really hard to experiment with people. Are you going to throw a person in a test tube to see what happens to that person? Um, you know, do you want to know if this pill is going to cause this person to lose weight? Well, in order to really figure that out is you need to give the person the pill to see whether or not they lose weight. However, that pill can be dangerous. So experiments on what can be dangerous. Um, and they are usually very lengthy and usually take a lot of time. But yes, in order to be classified as a um, scientific theory, um, it is classified today as a science. Okay, so now as we have a basis of psychology and we understand it as a science, let's talk a little bit about the origins of psychology, how it began, where it is today. Um, one of the things I want you to know is I want you to know the difference between psychology and philosophy. So psychology came about out of the exploration of philosophy and physiology. What is philosophy first? Philosophy is the study of knowledge, reality, and existence. So people started asking, and this is where you may have studied it in history, the Greeks started asking, where did we come from? Why are we here? So when people started asking that question, why, where, where do we come from? Why are we here? People started asking about why people are different. They worried about why we're here. Not the cause so much of individual behavior yet, but that's going to come. So what is physiology? Physiology is the study of human behavior, um, the study of the human body. So if you, um, you're going to study all the body parts and why certain things react a certain way. So out of those two fields, 
fit out of the field of physiology and philosophy came the field of psychology over time. Okay, I broke it down into five big areas. All right, so the first one was the prehistoric time period, which lacked a lot of science. Um, people just going around kind of making guesses of why we're here and what's going on with our minds. Then there was the ancient Greeks, which is the pre-scientific psychology as well. Not a lot of science backing it. And then it was the philosophical thought, which also, this was the philosophers. Okay, if you remember John Locke from history, again, it lacked science. And then finally, psychology was created. Psychology wasn't created until... 1879. So there were many, many years of this field going unnamed by psychology, but um, people were trying to understand the human mind. And then now we have the current contemporary thought, which we will learn about with the eight approaches. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about isn't even mentioned in your book. Um, your book starts with um, the Greeks as the first people who started to explore individuals' behavior and individuals' the individual's mind. But recently, um, a lot of explorers found um, a bunch of skulls in India and in China, and these skulls had a bunch of holes in them. Um, and they started, you know, bringing all the skulls together, and they started noticing that they're in very similar locations or in very similar spots. Um, so what many geographers and researchers and um, people who study anthropology believe that individuals would, if they were having a seizure, were acting um, out of the ordinary, um, they would have a surgical operation where they would tap on the individual's skull, creating a hole. And they thought if they tapped on this person's skull, then the devil or the spirit or whatever that was living within them would escape and would leave. Um, they also thought that this might help the individual. It ended up killing many individuals. Skulls were found, again, with small holes all over it. Um, this was known as Trump panning. Um, it was found in India and China, and it's believed to have been a surgical operation, um, exploring behaviors associated with seizures. You do not need to know this for the test, but this is kind of um, information. It's very new. Um, that kind of brings about that the field of psychology has been going on for years and years, um, and it's just kind of more exploration is being done on it.
time period. Okay, so this is what your book talks about. It talks about the ancient Greeks, kind of giving you a little who's who on the ancient Greeks here. First one is Socrates. Socrates believed that your mind and the body were separate. If something was going on with your body, it wouldn't affect the way that you think. Today, we know okay, that if something is going on with our body, okay, we can't write a certain way, we can't walk a certain way, it is going to impact our mind. Okay, he, but he thought that these two were entirely separate. Um, he also thought that you were born with the knowledge you have. So our ability to speak and talk, we're born with that. Okay, and we kind of just like turn on a little switch and the speaking comes out. Plato was his student um, and he also believed in dualism. So you're born with the knowledge you have. Aristotle was Plato's student, um, very different. Um, didn't necessarily want to listen to his teacher. He disagreed with both of them, Socrates and Plato. He believed that in monoism, um, that the mind is not separate from the body. Knowledge is not pre-existing. So here's my example with Aristotle. Okay, You don't know what fire is when you're a baby. You have never seen it before. And when you're a baby, if you were born with the knowledge, you would know that that fire is hot and not to touch it. However, in Aristotle's understanding, this knowledge of fire being hot is not existing. So you're going to go grab the fire and try and touch it because you don't understand that it, it could burn you. Okay? Neither of these ideas are 100% right or 100% wrong, but these are the early ideas of why we behave a certain way. The way I remember the order of who came first is Spa. Okay? Socrates, Plato, and then Aristotle. You do need to know which one is responsible for dualism and which one is responsible for monoism. It then flashed forward many years. Many years went by with little accountability on the field of psychology until the philosophers started popping up. About 1500 CE, you have Rene Descartes. Rene Descartes was French. He believed also in many of the thoughts of Socrates and Plato. He believed that the mind and the body were separate. This is dualism. The way I remember it, Descartes, dualism, both begin with D. Francis Bacon believed in Aristotle, and he believed that many people learn through experiences, which brings us back to monoism. And he examined patterns of learned behavior. Um, if a person does this, they're more prone to not do it again because of some experience they, that they learned. Um, and then this brings us to John Locke, born with the blank slate. He believed in Francis Bacon and Aristotle, which is monoism. John Locke believed in empiricalistic data. So John Locke thought that we needed data, we needed evidence to support our understandings, that empiricalistic data, okay? So the psychology is finally born into a science with the first experiment. The first experiment was done by Wilhelm Bunt. Okay, it happened in 1879 at the University of Leipzig, Germany. His assistants were Max Frederick and Stanley Hall. His goal was to study consciousness. He wanted to really understand the time lag between hearing a ball hit the platform and then you being conscious of it and pressing a key. Okay, what he found out is it takes an average person one-tenth of a second. So it takes us one-tenth of a second to be conscious towards something. So if I were to drop the ball on the floor, how long would it take me from hearing that to hit a lever? That's essentially what his first experiment was. Um, it was completed in Germany. Um, in 1879. So here's a quick picture of all the people that were involved in the research experiment, the first psychology research experiment. So Edward Bradford Titchener was also part of um, the research that was done by Wilhelm Wundt. He then decided to start this field. Um, he was a student of Wilhelm Wundt, and Wilhelm Wundt is usually known as the father of psychology. Um, he started this school, which it wasn't just like a building, it was like a big idea. It was like kind of um, 
like this was going to be called um, the field, this was the field's name. The field's name was structuralism, which was interested in the structural elements of the human mind. They wanted to know how the, um, the structure of the mind actually wor worked, the, the small elements of the mind. The school was centered around this idea of we can really figure out the small elements of a human's mind by doing introspection which is something like you look inward and report what's going on after you ask them a question. So if I asked you right now, look at this red rose and write down what comes to mind, you might write down, oh, beauty and the beast, because that was the first experience I had with a red rose. Other people might say death. Other people might say something else. But this was the first idea in which they were getting at somebody's mind. People were asked many questions. What are your immediate sensations, image, and feelings when you see this item or when you smell this thing? William James wasn't too keen on structuralism, so he founded functionalism. There's a lot more that goes into play than just understanding the small structural elements of an individual. You really need to understand how the behavior and the mental process all function together. So it was a school of psychology that focused on how the mental and behavioral processes function. He is known as, he brought um, psychology um, to America and he is usually known as the, um, um, the father of American psychology. He thought structuralism was foolish and that every person is different and you really need to know how the whole individual works in order to understand somebody's behavior rather than just looking at the small parts. So there was a battle of schools in the United States. Should we study structuralism? Should we study functionalism? The two intellectual schools of thought regarding this, um, the science of psychology. You need to know the difference between these two. Structuralism, led by Wundt and Edward Titchener. They focused on analyzing the consciousness into basic elements. It used introspection. Functionalism, led by William James, and focuses on the understanding of the role of consciousness and how it helps um, People and, um, and organisms adapt to their environment. It led to the investigation of mental testing, developmental patterns, and sex differences. The big thing that they use in the book to describe the difference between these two is think about a car. Structuralism would just open the hood and look at all the different pieces of the car to see if something is wrong with it. Functionalism would want to know how the whole car works together how if you press on the gas pedal the car will go okay it looks at the whole process versus structuralism just looking at the pedal so the remaining part of this video is going to talk about um, the important people at this point in time that you should know um, we already talked about Wilhelm Bundt um, he opened the first psychological laboratory in Germany he conducted the first experiment which studied consciousness and, and time lag you should also know, it's not on there, but he is usually known as the father of psychology um, because he started the field bringing science in, in, into the field. William James, we already talked about as well. He was a functionalist. He wrote the first psychology textbook, um, and he had a student named Mary Culkins, who also is pretty um, famous in terms of she was the first female president of the American Psychological Association. Mary Culkins, here she is. Um, she was the first woman to be allowed to study psychology at the graduate level, um, but she, but when she was admitted, all the men in the program dropped out. Um, this was at Harvard. Um, men did not want to be involved with um, in class, specifically with women. Um, she is known for her work in memory. She wanted to understand memory. She studied at Wesley College, and she was the 14th president of the American Psychological Association, but the first woman. Margaret uh, Floyd Washburn is another famous woman in the field of psychology. Um, she was the first female with a doctorate in psychology in 1894. She was the second female of the American Psychological um, Association um, president after Mary Wilton Culkins. She never married because she was a professor at a college and professors that were women were not allowed to marry. Um, she was at Vassar College for 36 years and she was really known for studying sensation and perception. So you keep hearing about this APA. Um, G. Stanley Hall founded the American Psychological Association, which 
um, is still in the works today. Um, they are the people who came that come up with the majority of the studies. Um, it is a big psychological association that studies mental health. We will be talking a lot about the um, APA association. Um, G. Stanley Hall was the person who founded it. He brought a lot of the work to America, the work in psychology. Um, he used introspection. We know he worked with Wilhelm Bundt and he focused on childhood psychology. So now we're kind of going into the contemporary field of psychology, which there's going to be a lot more notes in detail on the eight approaches. But um, some of the people that you need to know in the next couple slides are tied to one of these approaches. So you have the evolutionary approach, psychoanalysis, behaviorism, humanistic, cognitive, biological, behavioral genetics, and sociocultural. So this is, again, in one of the upcoming presentations, I'll go in detail on the contemporary psychology, but the people to know may fall under one of these areas. So first person um, that kind of stemmed in the um, 19, early 1900s um, was Sigmund Freud. We'll study a lot on Sigmund Freud. Um, he came up with psychoanalysis, really thought that your childhood experiences are going to shape your behavior believe that we have a lot going on on our unconscious minds, things that we don't think about that influence us. Study dream, dream analysis. He was the first, one of the first people to study personality. Why do we have the personality we do? Is it because of our parents? Um, he was one of the first people that uh, came up with the idea of therapy. We should use therapy, have people sit down, question them, have them respond, see how they answer questions. He emphasized the way um, emotional responses to childhood and our experiences impact behavior. Studied a lot on childhood behavior. Two people, John Watson um, and B.F. Skinner, uh, they are what are known as behaviorists. Um, they believed not so much your childhood experiences and unconscious nature, but they believed just in general experiences shape our behavior. If we've been rewarded or punished, we're more prone to do certain behaviors. Um, Psychological science should focus on observation. So, you know, you look at when you were little and you got a piece of candy for doing a good behavior. Well, you're more willing to do that behavior again because you want candy. This is what um, B.F. Skinner and John Watson believed in. Other people believe Maslow and Rogers. Um, Abraham Maslow and Carl Rogers believed in the humanistic approach. 1960s was going on. Um, they cared about meeting our needs for love and acceptance. They believed that everybody is born with the ability to set goals and make themselves better. Really emphasize on personal growth. If you have a goal set, you're more willing to do a good behavior. Um, again, we'll get in more depth on this um, approach. And the last person is Jean Piaget. It is a guy um, that studied cognitive development. They wanted to know at what age should you be able to do a certain math equation? What age should you be able to understand, um, you know, logic and reasoning? Um, Jean Piaget was a developmental psychologist. There's four stages of development that we're going to study with Jean Piaget and really looked at the cognitive um, psych development in an individual. Okay, so that is the end of the first section of video notes for Unit 1. Um, I want you to read over and review your notes. Um, Look at what you wrote down, spend a couple minutes digesting it, and then I want you to think of some questions that remain from this lecture. Maybe you understand everything, maybe you need me to clarify some stuff tomorrow, um, but this is your job as a student to review what I've talked about and to bring the questions to my attention.